Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the pen ridden quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. Let's get into part 16 of the loco build. I finished off the axles, made the connecting rods and produced the slide bar pivot pin and crank pins in brass. Finishing the axles. A cosmetic centre drilling applied. I used 5 16 inch silver steel for the axles. One piece was over length and one was under length and needed replacing. The length is 4.3 inches as scaled up from the plans. I am loctiting one wheel on each axle, leaving access for eccentrics. Using the chuck jaws to square the wheel while securing. I forgot that I wanted to undercut the axle for the crank grub screws, so I had to use a fixed steady. Grub screws damaged the surface somewhat and would prevent easy passage of the bearings. Here's the undercut, ten thou or quarter of a mil deep, and wide enough for the M3 grub screws. Offering up a grub screw. Sorry about the long thumbnail. Here's the drawing for the connecting rods. I will be using 3 8 by 3 16 inch steel strip for the big ends and 3 8 by 1 8 steel strip for the bulk of the rods. Staged photo. I put them up after deburring as I forgot to take an after the action shot. This is a build log to remind me how I did it. Both connecting rod ends were milled together. I did the coupling rod ends separately. They are very similar. 3 8 by 3 16 inch steel strip was used. Prior to this I cleaned up and squared the ends of the strip with the side of the large half inch end mill. They were then hacksawed off and milled to length together with a fly cutter, using that piece of 1 8 round rod as a parallel. The end radius has just been milled, two up to save time, using the same dimensions as on the coupling rods. Two big ends for both rods. Drilled 5.5mm diameter for later reaming to 732nd inch. Moving right along past the measuring, cutting, brazing, milling and filing the rod down from 3 8 to 1 quarter inch for most of the rod. Here I am working on the small end of the first rod. It's 0.3 inch diameter. For the first time I made filing buttons, as previously encouraged, from hardened pieces of silver steel mainly filing along their diameter with them free spinning, but finished up across them for the intersection with the rod using the round needle file with them clamped in place. One finished connecting rod and the other to start. I've been thinking about the boiler, thinking of using five flues for the very long large diameter boiler, positioned on the quarry Hunslet firebox formers. Squaring in the end of the 3 8 by 1 8 strip for the rod body. Cutting oil ready to hand. Connecting rod big end and rod fluxed with easy flow flux with a snippet of silver braze. Ready for heating with a butane torch. Straight after heating, it's still hot. A 5 minute bathe in the citric acid solution is required to shift the flux. I put it in cold. It's been cooled off on the bench drill work table. It was lacking silver solder on one side, so I buffed up the area with the rotary wire brush and refluxed it, ready for reheating. Straight after heating, I manually applied the braze this time. The big end wasn't square with a rod. I reheated it again a number of times, eventually using the steel rule against the hot rod sighting through. It's good now. Checking the center's length. My 0-6 inch digital calipers open to 6.050, but measuring on the inside edge of the 732nd crank and the 1-8 inch crosshead pin, I was able to measure the centers to 6.210 inches. Reaming the 730 seconds crank pin hole. The bench drill is set at its lowest speed. Cutting oil has been brushed onto the reamer. A small adjustment needed making in this axis. One day's work. 
milling the waist, 60 thou deep each side, down to one quarter inch for the rod width. I took 10 thou cuts vertically and 20 thou horizontally to get the apparent head length the same as on the coupling rods. Now it's time to start on the other end. Using the finished rod as a template for drilling the second. The piece has been centred on the vertical axis, so just needed to place a 1 8 rod in the chuck and pick up the existing reamed hole. And that's the drilling position for the second rod. The hole was centre drilled BS1, drill through 1.2mm, then 2.9mm, then finally 3.1mm for later reaming. Straight after reaming through 1 8 inch. Filing buttons on. I'm using an old BS1 centre drill with both ends broken off as a spindle. I roughly radius the end to this to test the rod in the crosshead. It fitted OK and I was able to power the chassis using my own puff. The new rod is on the far side. I don't have an air compressor and have no intention of getting one. Finishing off the little end right up to the rollers. I use a chainsaw sharpening parallel round fine file for the blend with the rod. I did a bit more finish filing and also re-hardened one of the buttons as the file was attacking it. Starting on the filing, doing half at a time. Plenty of filings were made, which reminds me of the coming Guy Fawkes season. My old steel filings. Filing and finishing takes a long time. I listen to LibriVox audiobooks with headphones on. I just started on Anthony Trollope. First side finished. I finally decided what to do for the crank pins. I'm going to make them removable, so I need to drill and tap an M3 hole for the grub screw. As the rods are unbushed steel, I've decided to make the crank pins from brass rod, 10 mil rod. The undercut is for the grub screw. The 732nds diameter has been relaxed a bit for the sake of the coupling rods. At this stage I discovered that I hadn't yet reamed the holes in the rods. This helped too. The flange has been faced off to 0.1 inch long. It may need thinning later, depending on the aesthetics. The length allows for the crank being painted and a little extra for general clearance. About half a mil all up. Two steel spacers from 3 8 bar, 3 16 wide for the front axles. This is the gap for the spacer. Finally finish the second side of the second connecting rod, all polished up. Rod off ready for the new crosshead pin. Two crosshead pins were turned from 3 16 AF brass hex rod, 1 8 diameter, and threaded 8BA on the end with a button die in the tailstock. Thanks for watching.